Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And I am your host, Conrad Cushman, and we are here to talk about multiple things today. But the main thing that I want to talk about is Dean Ambrose and the AEW effect. Wrestling World, this is episode 43 of the Everything Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Conrad Cushman. I usually go through everything, tell you to check out our Facebook, check out our Instagram. All that stuff's going to be in the description box if you want to look at that, and I'll save it maybe for the end. Right now, we have some big news happening. And WWE has announced that they are not renewing Dean Ambrose's contract when it expires in April. Now, Dean Ambrose, real name Jonathan Good, will not be renewing his contract with WWE when it expires in April. We are grateful and appreciative of all that Dean has given to WWE and our fans. We wish him well and hope that one day Dean will return to the WWE. That's from WWE.com's website. And it's shocking, like extremely shocking, that this is even happening right now. Um But the longer I think about it, should it be? And we'll get into that. Dean Ambrose is someone who I was excited for when he first turned heel a couple of weeks ago when we went back to Roman Reigns giving up the title and Dean and Seth win the tag titles. And Dean Ambrose had that epic heel turn on Seth Rollins. He gave him the dirty deeds right into the ground and then even on the concrete It was just an ultimate heel move, and I thought, man, now this is the Dean Ambrose I wanted to see. I'm excited for this. Each week, it kind of dwindled down with promos, certain things they had him doing, but it was still good at first until I started seeing him in these skits with doctors getting shots and getting vaccinated. He comes out looking like Bane all of a sudden, and... I don't know. I just felt like the idea was played out and the concept was old. He came out with that stupid brown jacket on with the fur and nothing about Dean Ambrose really changed. His intro to his music did a little bit, but what really changed about Dean Ambrose? The guy came out there in a jacket. He still wore his shield tags. He wore a studded belt and he came out in jeans. I don't even know if they were the um, the leggings that he was wearing before. But he came out in jeans. It was the same Ambrose without a shirt on. What, dude? And I know oftentimes me and um, other guests have talked about Dean Ambrose. And Dean Ambrose has not been the same since he was the WWE champion. And he went on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast on the WWE Network. And... I don't know if I would blame either one of them, but Stone Cold put Dean Ambrose in a bad position on there. Um, I felt Dean couldn't speak his mind freely because the WWE is a different world than what Stone Cold Steve Austin knew it as. And now we're in this mess. Um, (sighs) Dean Ambrose basically said on that podcast everything I think that's been bothering him for a while without really saying it. When he was talking to Austin on that podcast, he brought up the idea of people walking around on eggshells backstage because they don't want to make anybody mad and they don't want to piss anybody off. Dude, that's no type of company to run, especially in 2019. And I think that the same stuff still going on despite WWE a couple weeks ago advocating change when I stopped watching Monday Night Raw, I came back to see what's changed. Not a whole hell of a lot. They've tried a few things here and there, but it's really not working for me. And I'm trying to pay attention to everything. I'm trying to stay on top of what's going on in the wrestling world and what they're doing. But it's very, very boring at times. I did that Raw review yesterday. I did not enjoy it at all. Um, There was one thing that was good about it. It was Becky Lynch coming out. Then I wake up this morning, and as I'm getting ready to go into work, I see a story on PW Torch 
And they're talking about Dean Ambrose maybe leaving WWE. I retweeted. I posted on Twitter. I posted in several Facebook groups that I'm a part of. And all of a sudden, everybody's getting sad. They're like, what's going on? And then there were the naysayers like, well, we don't know if this is real yet. And I'm one of those guys, too. I never believe these dirt sheet stories right away because I'm like, I always feel there's a partial truth in there. And there's something that's a little bit fabricated, too. But it, it ends up working out to be both. But on this one, there were some people flat out denying that this was true. And I saw it on several different social media platforms. To all those people, I feel like you're wrong. And I know those people are right now saying, it's a work. It's got to be a work. I don't think it is. I really feel Dean Ambrose has been unhappy for quite some time. Jumping back to the Stone Cold Steve Austin interview. Remember what he said about wrestling Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32 in Dallas? Brock didn't want to do anything that Dean Ambrose wanted to do. Brock had other plans. He had a UFC match, and that's all he cared about. He didn't want to do any fun spots, nothing to give Dean some offense. He basically went in, dominated Dean Ambrose, and because he didn't want to do anything. How in the hell do you guys think that made Dean Ambrose look? The guy who's going to be there on TV tomorrow. And this goes back to the CM Punk rant and everything else. And I could get into it, but I completely understand. Dean Ambrose is unhappy and he wants out. I get it. Peace. I 100% understand. Now, some people are wondering, where does this put Renee Young in all of this? It depends on if she's happy or not, guys. Does Renee Young actually want to stay in WWE? Does she have other offers on the table? I've heard rumors that ESPN wanted her at one time. It all depends on what Renee Young wants to do. I don't think that there's going to be any ill will towards her. They may even use her as leverage to try and get Dean Ambrose back. But at this point, they're in real big trouble. With everything that's going on with him... I really feel like this. Dean Ambrose was a guy in The Shield who I think if you go back and watch the very beginning of when The Shield first debuted, I felt like Dean Ambrose was the leader of The Shield. He had the best mic skills. They gave him the singles championship run with the U.S. title, minus him never defending it. But I felt like there was a lot of stock in Dean Ambrose, and I thought he was really good. He had lots of potential. Even when they first split up, he was one of the first guys to face Seth Rollins. And I think they were saving that big match with Roman later on down the road. But still, he was a good person to have working with people. And I still think that. Ambrose has some chemistry with guys that's off the chain, and it works. With some of these other cats, it just doesn't. But Dean Ambrose was different, and there was something about him that the people liked. But they also made him so damn goofy. And he said so many stupid things. I still see him coming out of that police car the one time uh, with his hat turned sideways. And I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he's trying to impersonate Barney Fife or what the whole thing was. But they had him look really goofy. And he never really acted like a lunatic. He always just did the generic WWE thing. Even as a heel. He was the generic heel that was a chicken. Always ran away from people. That's not a lunatic, man. That's nothing special. Babyface runs. He did the exact same thing. And I think people just grew tired of Dean Ambrose. It was the fickle effect, as Daniel Bryan would say. People wanted Dean to be champ once he got it for a little bit. And AJ came in the picture. They did not want to see Dean Ambrose with that title again. I get it. Um, Looking back on Dean Ambrose's career, I think he had a hell of a run with the Shield. And I think the Shield is one of the most underrated factions for their work rate in the ring. Um, I absolutely enjoyed all of their matches that they had with people. I thought they were a great group when they were first put together. The second run, third run, eh, I can see why people get tired of it. But Dean Ambrose being gone, I think, is a huge blow. And it says something about WWE. And I'm going to get into that in a few seconds here, but let me just wrap up with my thoughts on Dean Ambrose. And I know this podcast is kind of all over the place. There's no notes right now. 
I'm doing this all off the top of my head. This is kind of just my feelings right now. I had no idea what I wanted to do this episode of the podcast on, and I just started talking. I turned on the mic and said, let's talk. So, Dean Ambrose. Um, I always thought he was a guy who deserved more than he got. He was someone who I always thought was a person who had potential to be an excellent heel, even top three heels in the company. And they just never let Dean Ambrose do things that's Dean Ambrose like. Even you could say John Moxley, like whatever you want to say, Dean Ambrose needed more help from WWE than what he got. He still got over, but he needed more help to maintain that energy that he had. And Dean Ambrose seemed like the kind of dude who, I I don't know, in those interviews when you watch him with Stone Cold, he felt weird. He didn't talk a lot, but he had this swag about him that was just like, you know, man, I just ride with the energy. I can see what they're trying to do. This is what they want to do. The man doesn't have Twitter. He doesn't follow the WWE rules already. Um, Supposedly, Vince loved him, according to Dean Ambrose. The guy had lots of potential. That's all I'm trying to say in the end of all this. Now, let me get into the second part of this uh, podcast. WWE and the treatment of their employees. We've heard several names mentioned since all of this has happened. Um, We've heard about the Revival supposedly asking for the release. Is it true? Maybe. Dolph Ziggler. Don't know he showed up in the Royal Rumble. Is it true? I, I kind of think he should go. He's been around for a long time, and I feel Dolph Ziggler in WWE is just stale at this point, and he needs to go away because absence makes the heart grow fonder. And we've heard names like Zack Ryder maybe wanting to be on his way out. Um, several other guys, uh, even Sasha Banks making messages with the Revival on Twitter saying, take me with you, when they were referring to leaving. Very interesting to see things like that. Is it something that WWE knows of or something that they want? Definitely no. I wouldn't want that for my company. But I think WWE has a real disengagement factor right now. And it comes down to this. WWE does not know how to treat its talent. Their talent seems very unhappy. And you know what? I'm on WWE.com now. Let's pull up who the talent are. And I can tell you, like, should they be happy or shouldn't they be? You see guys like Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he should be happy. Brock Lesnar's got a really good deal. He works when he wants to work. He basically has some say in it. And not all the time, but some of the time. And Brock barely does anything. He comes in, gives a great effort when he's in there. But he's got it easy. Daniel Bryan, I don't know if his new contract gave him all the say that he wanted, but Daniel Bryan's playing this awesome Captain Planet-like heel. He is the eco-villain, and Daniel Bryan is tremendous in his role, so I think he should be happy. Ronda definitely should be happy with her role. She's the current Raw Women's Champion, has not lost a singles match. Asuka, do you know what Asuka had to go through the past year since she won the Royal Rumble and lost to Charlotte at WrestleMania? She lost to Carmella two times. Freaking terrible how they treated her. Now it seems like they're on the ball with her because of the crowd reactions and stuff. Asuka's probably happy right now, but let's see what happens. Bobby Lashley, he came back, got a little push, and after that he kind of faded away. He's got Leo Rush. Shinsuke Nakamura treated like absolute garbage, and I'm so disappointed that he never won the WWE Championship within the past year or two. Like, Shinsuke Nakamura is better than the role he's in, and I actually hope that they treat him right as the U.S. Champion this time. Chad Gable and Bobby Roode, miscast. I really feel that these guys are stars. I like them as a tag team, personally, but I feel Bobby Roode was meant to be a singles heel. Why is he a babyface still? I don't get it. And Chad Gable, I think, is someone who is very underrated and someone who could be doing better. The Miz and Shane McMahon, they've got it made. I think they're happy with their positions in the company and they're just playing their roles. Buddy Murphy, if you're a cruiserweight at all, I'm going to lump them all into this. If you're a cruiserweight at all, you have to be unhappy. There's nothing good going on right now. Like, 
yes, there's 205 Live, but you just went back to being on after SmackDown. That's super crappy. It didn't work the first time, and people are still leaving the arenas. Why would you have stuff like that? We've heard rumors about AJ Styles potentially leaving. AJ wants to reduce schedule. Is WWE going to give it to him? Are they going to stick to their old ways, or is AJ a talent that's worth keeping right now? I think he is. Aiden English. This guy got Rusev Day over for the whole year. He was doing amazing things. You split the group up. Why? Just because, probably. And what happened? Nothing. He's on 205 Live now. Absolutely terrible, in my opinion, at least for him as a wrestler. Hopefully it works out for him because I like Aiden English, but it's just sad to think of what he could have been. Um... Akam and Razar, the AOPP. Really, dude. On NXT, they were dominant forces. They come up to the main roster. There's P jokes with them. Alexa Bliss, she should be happy. She gets almost everything she wants. She's had a successful title reign. She's always featured in segments. I think that she's a person that should be happy with what she's been given with the company. Sanity. Man, don't get me started. Uh, You know what? We're going to lump Sanity Andrade, if I can call him that, since I can't say CN Almas anymore, Apollo Crews, 205 Live, even Baron Corbin. Um, a lot of these guys have just not been used properly. Some of the tag teams, New Day, the Usos, they've been given nothing. All because WWE doesn't know how to properly treat their talent. Bray Wyatt, where where is he? What's he been doing? Like I said, guys, I'm not going to go through this entire roster of who, who should be happy. I know I started to, but we we know, basically. You know when you look at a guy, what's their position in the company and should they be happy? They promised us that we would see some of these tag teams back. I haven't seen them. They've taken GM roles away from people so that the McMahons and everyone else can get on TV. Okay, great. I'm missing seeing some people tag teams like Anderson and Gallo, Shelton Benjamin, um, so many other people. We have injuries. People are out plagued with injuries at this time. Very, very difficult to deal with. And if you guys can hear that, that is my neighbor outside uh, running the snow thrower. Uh, We are supposed to get a blizzard here in Buffalo real bad for the next two days. So uh, say a prayer for me. But. I want WWE to sit down, and if you guys have ever listened to Eric Bischoff talk, he talked about doing these sit-downs with wrestling fans or people, and I would like WWE to do that with their talent and just say, hey, what can we do to make this place better? I feel like these long shows suck, and I know WWE can't get out of that because of their contract right now, but... They need to sit down with their talent and say, hey, how can we make you happier? You have enough talent that you could do a rotating schedule for things. Not everyone needs to be on every show. Give someone a month off sometimes. You have so much talent, and the way they perform is completely different today than it was in the 80s. I know Vince McMahon wants to keep everybody healthy, but you know what? Let these guys go out here, do their thing, have a rotating schedule for tag teams, cruiserweights, everybody, put them on a rotating schedule. You go in, then you go out. You go in, then you go out. Maybe you give them a couple months off, and there's even points to where you'll go out for whatever reason. Maybe you'll come in and you're only going to do TV shows because you're not being billed towards a pay-per-view. Go back to long-term storytelling and creating characters that people can invest in and actually care about. I really feel like WWE just has to focus in on what matters to them and what they're actually going to do. Like I said, it's a it's a tough thing right now for everybody to understand, but treat your talent better, WWE. There's no easy way to put that. These guys are your backbone of the company. You have not invested anything into the future. Hence why Monday Night Raw is in the trouble that it's in right now. Think about it. They could have built people up for quite some time, and they never did. They put so many guys on the back burner. 
Some guys, they gave the consolation prize of the Intercontinental title or the U.S. title, and that diminished the meaning of that title. The tag division, maybe for a week or two, they'll treat it great. They'll put on some great matches with the Usos and New Day, but then they'll put them right back on the pre-show. 205 Live has been doing excellent, and sometimes those matches can't even get featured on the main card. Part of the reason why I feel like Neville left and Austin Aries. They had a great match at WrestleMania 33. I was live in attendance, and they weren't treated very well afterwards. They didn't get any royalties for the DVDs. They didn't make any extra money off of it because they weren't featured on the main card, and that sucks. So I don't know if you guys have any ideas on how WWE can make this better, or maybe at the place of where you work. I got tongue-tied there for a second. Uh, maybe at the place where you work, maybe they sit down and try to get feedback from employees because WWE does treat their independent contractors with finger quotes there as employees. I don't know. Maybe they could come up with something better. Maybe you guys could let me know once you listen to this. Give me a comment on it. But I really think they have to figure out something to do to make their people happy that are in their company. Hey everyone, I'm Josh Burton, inviting you all to come join the fastest growing group dedicated solely to college basketball, Everything College Basketball. Just go to Facebook and in the search bar type in Everything College Basketball. Once you've joined, feel free to begin chatting with other diehard college hoops nuts like yourself. Also, while you're there, go check out the podcast on Anchor, Podbean, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just search up Everything College Basketball Podcast. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Ooh, yeah! Dig it! All right, guys, we're back at it. Do me a favor and make sure you check out Josh and Peyton Burton's Everything College Basketball. We have March Madness right around the corner. And it's going to be a crazy time to be a College Hoops fan. So make sure you check out their podcast. It's on Anchor. You guys will not be disappointed. Let's get back into the last part of this uh, thrown together podcast. And I apologize if it sounded like I was rambling at any point on that one. But I just had to get some stuff off my chest like immediately about the Dean Ambrose thing. Um, I saw that get tweeted probably literally when I pulled in the driveway from getting home from the gym. So let's talk about AEW. Now, I know when people see this, you're going to say, oh, he made it look like Dean Ambrose is going to AEW in the picture. No, we're talking about two different things. I don't know where Dean Ambrose is going to go at this point. He's got options. Maybe he doesn't even want to wrestle anymore. Who knows? But the reason I put this AEW picture up and it's coming up because of compliments of JD from New York. He's been talking about it for weeks and it comes down to the AEW effect. I know that a lot of wrestling fans are putting AEW on this plateau or platform that it's not going to live up to those expectations, not right away either, but they're going to make people sick of it because they are, oh, AEW's better than this and WWE, it's better than WWE's Attitude Era. You can't say stuff like that because AEW hasn't produced anything yet. So I just want people to pump their brakes and hold their expectations. Am I saying don't support them? Not at all. I am. I bought a t-shirt. I'm a fan of AEW. And I hope that they succeed. And I'm going to look forward to Double or Nothing, May 25th, 2019, MGM Grand Ballroom. In Las Vegas, but you have to have your expectations in check when it comes to talking about them in pro wrestling. Not every single person who loses a match is going to AEW. Not every single person who's unhappy with WWE is going to AEW. You see guys like Bandino and all them signed with um, Ring of Honor. Uh, Same thing with Roosh. Crazy. And that goes back to even Andrade telling him not to sign there because WWE isn't all that it's cracked up to be according to the dirt sheets. But back to giving JD credit for this, a lot of people are saying, 
oh, no, man, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm one of these people, too. You don't know what you're talking about, man. People are not. There's no AEW effect. It's not even a company yet. I think ever since they've had that rally in Jacksonville, people's minds have been changed a little bit. And the wrestling world has another promotion in it, and there's lots of money back in that one. Now, I'm not saying that it's direct competition for WWE at this point. Not saying that at all. But where there's money, there's opportunity. And there are more opportunities in pro wrestling than we've had in quite some time right now. You can leave, and you can earn more money. Vince McMahon is supposedly offering guys... If you can show them on paper how much money a company has offered you, they will beat that price. What is this? Home Depot versus Lowe's now? Like, we're going to, yeah, I'll match that and beat it by 10%. It's getting crazy for the talent. And it seems like a lot of talent who haven't been used properly or are unhappy. We've heard interviews with Sasha Banks. She's not happy. The Revival, I get it why they're not happy. They've not been treated properly. WWE likes to have their favorites, and it seems like they've forgotten about everybody else. And that's sad. That's a sad state of affairs that we're in right now to think like that. But AEW is having an effect on this business that not a lot of people are willing to talk about. And I believe it's a good thing. Would you have seen a talent like Dean Ambrose leave Three years ago, I wouldn't have imagined it. I couldn't, I wouldn't imagine anyone doing something like that because WWE was the only place to work and it was the only place that was on fire at the time. I mean, you could go to Ring of Honor and stuff, but what's that really doing? Now, New Japan started rising up. Ring of Honor and their relationship with New Japan also rose up. Impact Wrestling is trying to rebuild. But they they have enough time to build a couple stars, and it looks like they've taken a lot of the Lucha Underground guys, and those guys are being built up. I thought Lucha Underground was an excellent show that a lot of people should check out. There's a lot of places to wrestle for right now. Look at MLW. They've got Loki over there as their champion, and he's doing great. I love the Heart Foundation in MLW. This stuff is changing the business. And uh, all the stuff that Cody talked about, and I know people said the stupid stuff like, oh, AEW is going to pay for talent's insurance. They won't be able to afford that. Not at this point, at least. Maybe in the future, that's a thing that they can do, and I think that would be great. But they will have stuff for the executives. They're going to have equal pay for men and women on the same level. So it sounds like they already have tier plans put in place. Excellent. They are changing the game, and that's perking up a lot of people's ears. Imagine if you came in under an NXT contract, and even the NXT talents. I forgot to mention that with the unhappiness. NXT talents were not in the WWE 2K19 video game this year. And I'm probably leading to some speculation with all of this because it has not been confirmed by these two people, but we were missing Tommaso Ciampa, who has been the NXT champion for quite some time, and Nikki Cross. I believe that they're not in the video game this year because NXT talent are paid less than those on the main roster. And Tommaso Ciampa and Nikki Cross probably feel we've been featured in enough matches this year and we've put on a better product than the main roster that we deserve more money. And I 100% agree with them. I don't think that this is paying your dues. I think that they were both talented competitors when they were already not in WWE, and now that they're here being used and put in main events, they want their just due, and I get it. It's a hustle being a pro wrestler. And AEW has changed the minds of a lot of people. It seems like more people are willing to speak out. More people are willing to ask for money. AEW coming out has also allowed, man, AJ Styles hasn't signed yet. Maybe we need to uh, figure out what he wants and what he needs. And if they don't come back with something that AJ wants or needs, he's going to listen to some other offers because he knows what he's worth. And that's the beauty of knowing your worth in this business. 
And a lot of these guys aren't even caring about the money anymore. WWE's like, oh, we can offer you more money. Some of these guys seem like, and that's including Dean Ambrose. Rumor has it that they offered him more money, almost double what he was making. And Dean Ambrose still said no. Could it be that you're that miserable that you don't want to work there anymore and it's not about how much money you're getting paid? A lot of business books say that once you get past making $80,000, nothing about money matters anymore. I don't know how true that is because I've never made that much money. I hope to one day, but these guys aren't feeling it anymore. They're not getting their creativity um their their creativity juice is flowing. They're not involved in any of the stuff like it used to be. That's part of the problem with this whole the attitude era isn't as good as people think. Was the attitude era that good? No. I mean, there's some bad parts to it, but there was also some good to it as well. I know they didn't treat women the best, but there was good parts to the attitude era and this whole allowing people to be their characters, allowing Stone Cold Steve Austin to be himself. You cannot manufacture another rock, a Stone Cold. You have to let these guys be themselves, turn the personality up, and go out there and have fun. You can feel fun off of the wrestler's energy. Sometimes I feel like they're just going out there, going through the motion, some people. And why wouldn't you if you're on a crappy match in a horrible slot on a pay-per-view or a three-hour Raw where people are tired, sick of the length of the show, and they're ready to go? The AEW has a unique opportunity to bring something different to wrestling. Come into the pro wrestling business and just have fun. Make it fun for the fans. Make it fun for the talent and make money. That's the point of all of this. Have fun, have fun for the fans, and make money. They live the rock star life, and that's what it's about. And I feel like people in WWE just see it now as a job and it's a chore to go around to each of the cities. Maybe they're wrestling too many matches. Like I said, maybe they need that schedule. I don't know what it is, but. They have to do something to improve this. You have too many talent leaving at this moment. And I think it's not the end of it. I think this is just the beginning. It all reminds me and goes back to CM Punk. He was one of the first people to speak out about his unhappiness. And when I listened to his uh, podcast with Cole Cabana, where he interviewed him basically about it, and it was basically CM Punk just talking and telling the story. It opened my eyes to a lot of problems within WWE. And sometimes the hypocritical nature just starts to wear on you. And it makes you wonder, is a lot of this stuff worth it? Why am I doing this if I'm not happy? And I think a lot of these guys aren't caring about the money. WWE is worried about New Day leaving now. I already mentioned Dolph Ziggler, Zack Ryder. The Revival, Sasha Banks, and who knows out of their friends that are going to be willing to go. What if Anderson and Gallows want to go because they hear AJ Styles is leaving because they've been mistreated this whole time too. They haven't even had matches on the shows. What is going on? There's a lot that we could complain about and do something about, but I'm more concerned with how do we fix this because we need pro wrestling to succeed on all levels. And no, I'm not just saying that for the podcast. I'm saying that as a fan. We need pro wrestling to succeed so that we can have talent everywhere thrive and flourish. And maybe WWE has too much of the pie right now, and they need to split it up and let some other guys go to other places and let them be stars there. Do I have any answers on how to fix any of this that are concrete? Not at the moment. And that's probably another show for another day. But as far as this episode of the Everything Pro Wrestling Podcast is concerned, it's very sad to see Dean Ambrose leave the WWE. And I do believe that the AEW effect is actually happening and it's real. 
We don't know how real it's going to get, but we'll have to wait until May 25th when Double or Nothing happens and see what announcements are made in between that time. Folks, I'm Conrad Cushman, and you've been listening to the Everything Pro Wrestling Podcast. Leave me your thoughts down below, and I'm out. Check out the new Instagram page at EPW Show, or I'm sorry, Instagram, type in EPW Show. Follow us on Twitter at EPW Show. All the links are in the description for this stuff, guys. I'm out. We'll be back next week with another episode of the podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.